today's episode we will deal with saving and loading the inventory which will be important for you if you're trying to include the inventory system in a real game first off we will save all of the variables of a top-down character so let's go in here and you have to decide which variables should be saved I will just save the current HP and our current gold so let's close the top-down character go to a blueprints folder and let's create a new folder here called save games open that up, right click and create a new blueprint class under the all classes search for save game and select that then we can call that our tdc save for top down character and in here we kind of have to duplicate the variables that we have to save so we will create a variable for a saved gold which will be an integer and another variable for the saved HP which will also be an integer alright that's everything we have to do here compile and save then we have to go back to our top down character alright now we need some functions in here the first one will be called save game and what we will do here is right click search for create save game object select the class that we just created called tdc save the return value we will have to cast to our tdc save and then let's promote that to a variable called save game object and now what we'll do is drag in the save game object and set the saved gold and also set the saved hp if you have some other variables in the save game object you would have to set them as well connect those and we will set the save goal to our current goal and the saved HP to our current HP then drag off of the save game object and search for a function called save game to slot leave the user index as zero and for the slot name you can type in everything you want you would just have to keep that in mind so I will use tc save and after we save the game to slot we can return also let's go back to the beginning and before we create the save game object let's check whether the save game object is already valid so did we already create one if not we will create a new one but if it is valid we will just go to the set save code also in case that our cast fails we will return as well Compile and save. Now the next function will be load game, obviously. And in here, do the same thing that we did in save game at the beginning. Get the save game object, check whether it is valid. If it's not valid, we will call the function with the name load game from slot. Connect that. And enter the slot name that we typed in before, tdc save cast the return value to tdc save once again and let's set that to the save game object after that get the save game object and get the saved variables here save gold saved hp and now we will set our current hp and set our current gold to the safe variables after that we will return also go through the cast failed at a return node and when our safe game object is already valid we will skip the load game and cast and go to the set current HP let's compile and save now we actually need a way to save our game and we will just right click somewhere in the event graph search for S so when we press the S key we will just call it save game and let's set it up so that when we play the game we will directly load it so let's go to the event begin play and before we do anything search for does save game exist slot name will be the one we typed in before TDC save 
and search for a branch. So if there is no save game, we will just spawn the BP inventory actor. But if there is one, we will load the game and after that spawn the BP inventory. Let's compile and save. Alright, now we can test that. Let's give us some gold by pressing F. And yeah, let's pick up some health potion. Double click to use them. So now our HP is full. Let's hit S and escape. And when we play now, you can see that our HP is full and we have 450 gold. So we successfully saved the current HP and the current gold. However, we will still need to save our inventory and we have to keep track of the pickup actors so that you cannot close the game, reopen it and every pickup actor has respawned. So let's do that. First we go to our inventory system, blueprints and create a new structure here. That will be S underscore saved pickup. So for every pickup actor we will store an ID which will be an integer and the rest amount for the pickup actor. Close it. Then let's open up our BP inventory and let's create a new variable called looted pickups that will be an s underscore saved pickup array. File and save. Now minimize the inventory and under item classes open the BP pickup actor. Here create a new variable that will be the ID of the actor which will be an integer and editable and exposed on spawn. Compile and save. Now when we add the item, we were successful and we still have some amount left, we will update the text. And right after that, get the inventory reference of our top-down character, let's drag that over. Get the looted pickup, actually let's call that looted pickups, because it's an array, compile and save. And we will add to it. Now for the new item here, the S saved pickup structure, split that. The ID will come from our ID and the rest will be our current amount. But if we have no rest left, let's move everything a bit to the right here. And we will get the looted pickups once again, add to it, again split the struct pin, this time the ID will be our ID again, but the rest will be zero, since we completely looted that actor and it will be destroyed then. Now let's compile and save, of course we also have to set the IDs, so let's go to our level and Let's start here, that will have the ID is 0, next one's ID will be 1, then 2, 3, and so on, 4, 5, and finally 6. Save that, go to our save games folder, right click, new blueprint class, again the parent class will be save game call that our inventory save and for our inventory we will save the current weight so create a variable here called saved weight which will be a float next one will be the saved slots which will be an s underscore inventory slot array and finally we need the saved pickups which will be an s underscore saved pickup array. Compile and save. We can close that and go back to our BP inventory. Now we need some new functions. The first one we call save inventory. And just like we did before, create save game object. This time the class will be inventory save. Cast the return value to inventory save promote that to a variable 
called save game object, then drag in the save game object and set the saved weight, set the saved slots, and finally set the saved pickup. And we will set that to our current rate, our slots, and our looted pickups. After that, drag off of the save game object and save game to slot. Again, user index will be zero and slot name inventory save. After that, we can return. Go back to the cast when it fails. Also add a return node. And at the beginning here, let's get our save game object. Search for is valid. If it's not valid, we will create one. But if it is, let's just go to the set saved weight. Compile and save. Now for loading the inventory, we will need some other helper functions. The first one will be called contains ID question mark. It will have an input, which will be the in ID that we're searching for. It should be an integer. The output will be first a boolean, just called out. So did we found that ID? And if so, we will also keep track of the rest amount left for that ID. Let's promote the in ID to a local variable called local ID. Let's create some other local variables. First the local bool which will be a boolean and not an array. And the next one will be local rest, which will be an integer. All right, so after we set the local ID, let's get our looted pickups and go into a for each loop with break. What we'll do is break the array element and check whether the ID equals the local ID that we're searching for. Then hold B and left click to add a branch. Connect that to the branch here. If it's true, we will set the local bool to true and set the local rest to the rest from our break as safe pickup. After that, we will break out of our loop and when our loop is completed, we will return the local bool and the local rest. The next helper function will be called load pickup actors. In here, right click, search for get all actors of class. Class will be BP pickup actor. And off of the out actors, we will use it for each loop. Off of the array element, get the ID. And off of that, search for contains ID. So we will check for all of the pickup actors in our level whether we looted them once. And if so, so add a branch of the out variable. So if it's the case, we will check whether the rest is greater than zero. Add another branch, connect that to the true path of the first branch. If it's not, so if it's equal to zero, get the array element and destroy the actor. But if there is some rest def, get the array element here, set amount, and the amount will be the rest from our contains ID function. And after that, off of the array element, search for update text. Then, when our loop is completed, we will return. Compile and save. And now the last function will be load inventory. And in here, get the save game object, check whether it's valid. If it's not, we will load game from slot. Slot name will be inventory save. Pass the return value to inventory save then set the save game object if our cast was successful 
and we will set the current weight, set our slots, and finally set the looted pickups. Then get the save game object, get the saved weight, saved slots, finally the saved pickups, and connect all of them to the set nodes. After we did that, let's load our pickup actors. And then we will return. Go back to the cast. When it fails, we return. And when our save game object is valid already, let's go to the set current weight. Now compile and save that. We will also need to call that function, so let's go to our event graph to event begin play. And before we do anything in here, let's disconnect the nodes here. Search for does save game exist. The slot name will be inventory save. Then add a branch. So if there is no save game, we will just go to resize our slots array. But if there is one, let's load the inventory. And since we also load the current weight, let's check afterwards whether the current weight is greater than the weight cap, the overloaded cap here. Add another branch. If it's false, go to the resize. But if not, let's set overloaded to true. Get the top down chart reference and call on overloaded. Then resize. Alright, now we also need a way to save our inventory. For that, let's just go to our top down character. And when we press S, somewhere here, right here, after we save the game for our top down character, let's get the inventory reference, check whether it is valid. And if it is, call save inventory. Alright, that was everything we had to do for our save and load system. So from now on we would also save the inventory, but we already created the save file and we have 450 gold and full health glow. If sometimes you just want to delete your save files, you can just right click on any of your classes here, then select show in explorer. Go back to your project name under saved, save games and just delete the SAV files here. Now when we play test, we have zero gold and half of our health potions and let's pick up some items here. Maybe also the hero swords. Let's use our health potions. Now we have full HP. F sometimes, 425 gold. Now when we hit S, close the game and play again. You can see that our item is maintained. We have 425 gold left and full health. You can see that our pickup actors were deleted and here are the ones that we did not loot yet. So let's do that quickly. You can see now we are overloaded. When we hit S, escape, play again, we are still overloaded. Alright, that's it for our save and loading system. Please note that this is some very basic setup and if you want to make a real game out of it, you would also have to save something like the equipped meshes or the position of our widgets that we can drag around. But this video should just get you started and you should be able to do that yourself now. See you in the next one.